Good afternoon all. Um, a quick update to the smart battery video I did um, a day or two ago. Um, I set this battery to self storage, um, to put itself into a storage charge state, that's a sort of mid voltage, after 12 hours. Now it's been ooh, probably 48 hours now, um, so the 12 hours has elapsed, but I'm not expecting it to um, go into self storage voltage, particularly the one I chose, which was 3.6 volts, which is quite low, uh, very quickly. So uh, what I want to do is plug this and it only uh, needs to be plugged in to this monitoring device with the balance charge lead. So there'll be no data transfer down the BatGo smart wire. So it should stay in its uh, mode where it's going into self storage. Let's plug it in and see what voltage it's at. Now, before I um, left it for the 12 hours, I set it to, uh, I charged it to about four volts per cell. So let's see how far it's come down from four volts per cell. And uh, yes, it's down to 3.78 volts per cell. This one's a little bit higher, cell four. Now I imagine if it's gonna take all the four cells down to 3.6 volts, um, then it will rebalance them at that mid voltage. Uh, not that that's terribly useful, but it should bring uh, these cells into a better alignment than this 10 millivolts. Actually, it may not, of course, because the chip inside here, which is measuring voltage of the cells, was only doing that to two decimal places. So it may have uh, a 10 millivolt discrepancy between the cells when it's finally completed the job. Right, now the other thing I've noticed, let's just unplug that, as I say, that shouldn't interfere with this battery's uh, process of bringing the cell voltages down. But uh, the other thing I've noticed is that there's a warm patch on this uh, black covering here, up at this end, next to uh, the balanced charge cable. It just feels a bit warmer there. Um, now, I thought, well, that's not very convincing, just saying I think it feels a little bit warmer up at this end. So uh, I've gone down to the storage unit and got the Zin test thermal imaging camera, and I want to see if I can show this warm patch. Right, let's switch this thing on if I can remember how to do it. OK, that's on. And... Um, have a look at this battery. Oh yes, there is very definitely a warm patch. Now you've got to remember, uh, let me just scroll this left to get more of the uh, uh, visual image and scroll it right to mix in uh, an amount of thermal image. So let's go back to about there. You've got to remember that the um, thermal imaging sensor and the visual sensor are offset. So being this close, you can expect there to be uh, an offset. Whoops, I pressed the button for storing photos. Don't really want to do that. Uh, there's a height offset. There's a vertical offset between the battery, which is here. Oh, that's my hand, so I can't really put that into the shot either. It's difficult to see the battery uh, unless it's like that. So there's that's where the battery is, and the hotspot is showing as a little bit lower but it's not a little bit lower. If I bring that away from the battery, uh, it's not in focus, but you can see that the hotspot then rises up a bit. The hotspot is most definitely on the top of this black surface. So let's see if we can get some numbers. Uh, the maximum temperature is 31 there, and the minimum is 22. Well, 22 is the background here. Uh, actually, I suppose if I point this at there, I can get to the temperature at that point, and I can't because it's off the screen. Uh, that's not working terribly well, is it? Let me tip that down. Oh, but now I'm getting my my fingers, which are showing up as thermally warm. But anyway, uh, the maximum temperature in the middle of that hotspot is 33 degrees, and uh, the ambient is 22. Uh, the top of that thing there, if I can read it, oh, it says it's 25. Yeah, it's off the screen, but it says it's 25. So yes, there's definitely a hotspot on this battery. Um, it is generating heat, 
So it's using uh, presumably resistors across those cells. They're quite small. It's not generating a lot of heat. They're not um, low resistance enough to be used as balance um, for balance charging because it wouldn't happen quickly enough. Uh, but they are being used to put this battery into a storage voltage state. Now, the other thing that I don't think I did very convincingly in the previous video was show the user configurable parameters. So I'm going to plug this into uh, this unit now. Now, that probably will interrupt the uh, storage charge process, but that's all right because it should fire up again after we've done this. Let's plug that in with the uh, BATGO cable enable, press and hold the center button. That takes you into the configurable uh, user parameters. So there's the auto storage after 12 hours go to 3.6 volts. But the other ones are these. So I'm gonna set this one to uh, 2.6 amps. That's double the uh, capacity. So I've set it to a 2C current um, and I want the charge voltage to be 4.2 volts. Well, let's actually change that to say 4.1 volts, uh, which is the minimum you can set it to. Um, now I was having a bit of issue saving this. I'm not quite sure how you save it. Uh, maybe you just come out and go back. Let's go in again. So yes, it's definitely set to 2.6 amps, 4.1 volts. So that's that one. Let's do the other one. Now this one, twice the capacity will be three amps. So let's set this one to three amps. I may have done it already actually. So press and hold that. Uh, yes, that's set to three amps. Let's just edit this voltage then, set this to say, I don't know, 4.15 or something, and then go back. Let's go back into that and just make sure it's held those numbers. Yes, so now I'm gonna use the T8 charger and see whether it picks up those user parameters as default settings for uh, doing a charge on both of these batteries. So let's power the T8 charger from a non bat go battery, which means I can then plug these two in alternately. Let's just power this from a regular uh, 4S battery. And then just plug these in in turn. Let's start with the 1500. And just go for a charge. And you can see that the 1500 is saying it's going to charge at 3 amps to 4.15 volts. Let's not actually do that. Let's go back, unplug that, plug the other one in. That's the unplug sound. The plug in sound seems to be a descending uh, tone and the unplug sound is an ascending tone, which is a little bit back to front. Uh, right, let's attempt to charge this. And yes, you can see that the 1300 milliamp power um, says it's the default charge parameters are 2.6 amps and to a voltage of 4.10 volts. So certainly the user parameters uh, let you uh, set uh, parameters in the battery, which the charger will then use as a default. You can override these, of course. I can go up to that voltage and say, no, I don't want 4.1 volts. Or can I task charge? Yeah, uh, current, I can change that. Oh, I can't change the voltage, that's interesting. Maybe I can if I remove the BATGO data. Let me pull that out a little bit more. Charge, voltage, now I can change it. How interesting, it looks like if you set um, a termination voltage as, as a user parameter, you can't actually override it. Mm. So now that I've communicated with this uh, battery, updating those uh, user parameters, voltage and current, I've probably interrupted the uh, self-discharge function. So it'll probably now wait uh, another 12 hours before it starts that again. Can we confirm that that's the case by looking at this with the, the thermal imaging camera? Right, here are both the batteries. That's the 1300 on the left, 1500 on the right. In fact, let's put them closer together and the thermal imaging camera shows that um, there is still a hot spot on the 1300 um, which is about 30 degrees so is that still uh, doing its discharge uh, did that not get interrupted 
Uh, maybe the only way I'm going to tell is with this pink fan. So let's give it a bit of pink fan for a while, try and cool these down, and then repeat the thermal imaging test. Uh, while I'm doing this, I thought you might like to just see the back of this. I'm sure I've shown this before. 2.8 watts, DC 5 volts, even though it's powered from a lithium 18650. Uh, that's the motor then, presumably 5 volts, uh, 1 amp. So is that uh, has that cooled them down enough that the uh, thermal imager shows nothing? Yes. Yeah, so now what I need to do is just let them sit there for a moment, see if that um, heat comes back. Oh, it look, it it does look as if it is coming back. So maybe it's still working on that. There's the thermal map. Maybe it's still actually working on that. Um, discharge program even though I um, talked to that battery it looks like it's still doing it maybe if I actually switch that off it, it may stop interesting right let's plug this in uh, press and hold to go into the user settings uh, no that hasn't gone into the user settings for that so back to go okay yes it's slightly more difficult to get into it on this charger uh, let's go into auto storage and set that to off which is above 240 enter so that is definitely off uh, come down and exit that and uh, now repeat the thermal imaging test and yes, the thermal imaging camera is still showing uh, some heat. Oh, I keep pressing the trigger button. Uh, some heat on the left-hand battery, but not on the right-hand battery. So uh, a bit of pink fan again, I think. Let's cool them down again. And uh, see whether that's still the case. Um, right, well, this is all a bit inconclusive, really. There's still 33 degrees on the left-hand battery. Uh, the 1300 milliamp hour even though I've turned off the auto storage feature so is it determined to complete the first auto storage uh, before it accepts that I've switched it off you can see there's definitely a warm patch a hot patch uh, on that left hand battery there's a very mild bit of uh, heat on the right hand in the same place but it's barely there mix the uh, live image back in the optical image uh, but the left one is still hot so I don't know what's going on so that was a little update on these uh, smart batteries these bat go smart batteries yes they certainly do indeed uh, discharge themselves they generate heat so they uh, set themselves back to a sort of mid voltage it's funny isn't it because back in the 80s when I first um, got involved with an electric flight club. They were all flying nickel cadmium back then and the biggest nuisance with nickel cadmium is when you charge them They quite quickly um, the voltage drops off So you need to sort of charge in the field and then fly immediately if you stored nickel cadmium for any length of time They were always flat and now we've got lithium batteries which can hold a full charge but because it doesn't really do them much good in the long term we put electronics in them to go back to the old days of uh, batteries discharging themselves. It's somewhat ironic. Um, and I hope you found the inf extra information on the uh, user configurable parameters. The uh, current, which uh, you can set, uh, which is just a starting default for the battery charger, uh, although you can override it. And the maximum voltage you can also set in these smart batteries. And that can't be overridden. Uh, by the charger so you would actually have to change that uh, user parameter hope you found that useful cheerio